got your notes. All right. Welcome, everybody. We are live. We are uh, here with Cody. How are you, sir? Howdy. I'm and here. my lovely Bond girl Aww. slash wife, Lindsay, is here with us as well. That's very uh, our our fact checker and and human computer. Thank fact you. Fact checker sounds so much more official than like Wikipedia <laughs> Googler. <Yeah. laughs> but yeah, <laughs> our Googler. I did a wiki search while watching the movie. That's okay. I do that too. I read the IMDb page and yeah. one person's interesting review of this movie. <laughs> well, we we are we we have been covering the James Bonds. Uh, Going through our bondathon, and we've been going for uh, uh, going by director, so it's been um, a mix and match, which is which is really cool. I, I find that I I'm really enjoying it this way. And uh, tonight we are who was it? Lewis Gilbert. Yes, we're doing the three Lewis Gilbert films. So. We are covering our last Connery film, You Only Live Twice. And then well, we are doing... Ones. Well, we already did Diamonds Are Forever. Official. Officially. officially, we have ended the Connery era of the Bond franchise. Yeah. And then we're closing out the 70s of the Roger Moore era with The Spy Who Loved Me and Moonraker. Mm -hmm. yes. So... I think this is the first time like I could tell these were all directed by the same person and it's cuz they kind of all have the same plot. <laughs> yes, I was noticing that. Uh while while watching these, I was like, man, there's just so like I know Bonds, I, I know the Bond films they borrow from each other and they they rip each other off, but these three especially were like man you could you well, can definitely tell. All three villains have elaborate layers, right? Those are dope layers. I don't think Blofeld wants to recreate society. I think he just wants to like hold the world ransom, like for for one million dollars. So yeah, let, let's get straight right into it. You Only Live Twice is exactly the plot of Austin Powers. Austin Powers took that Bond movie and they're like, we're going to make that into our movie. Yes. And I, now, again, this is one of the things that I, I do love about... Do we get to wrap the James Bond chapter up with Austin Powers? <laughs> Please, if I have to watch all of them this time. <laughs> We might can do that. We might can do a standalone. I'll do it by myself. Y'all awesome know powers. Be here. No, I can. I can. <laughs> I might can rewatch them, but I but can definitely watch one and two again. I don't care for Gold Member. Is it because John Travolta's in it? No, that's not John Travolta. Yeah, at no. the end, at the end, it is. In the oh, is yeah, that yeah. Gold Member. Yeah. yeah, that's right. And Beyonce's yeah. in it. Well. No, Beyonce is fine, and uh, Michael Caine's fine. It's just that it is is I don't know. It's getting a little too much for me. We we can talk were, about it. They were running it. It ran its course, and they knew yeah. it. They were like, "This is gonna be the third, and hopefully the final one." We I can't mean, make as many of these as they made James Bonds. Yeah. Nope. But well, side tangent. Um, before we get started. So I don't know if anyone's ever seen um, Mike Myers' movie, The Love Guru. I haven't. I hear it's pretty terrible. I I, I have not. I I've, I've seen bits and pieces. On it. I, I think I'm the only person who's seen it all the way through, but it doesn't matter because I don't remember enough of yeah. it. Yeah. Anyways, that movie flopped. And they're like, well, Mike, comedy's changed and you got to do something else. And he's like, well... That's my thing, so I guess I just won't star in star in movies as the lead anymore. <laughs> well, well, I mean, I guess way to stick to your guns if that's what you just absolutely want to do. But 
Well, I mean, that's his wheelhouse, you know, and like it times yeah. change. So he knew that like that's his aesthetic as a comedian. Like mm-hmm. I do I do these parodies of caricatures and apparently that's not funny anymore or it's not in trend. So, you know, he's just sitting there counting his Shrek money. So he's OK. Right. <laughs> Yeah, his shrimp dollars are still still stretching. So don't forget how I married an uh, I married an yeah. axe murderer. <laughs> uh, so you only live twice. I know this movie is so cringy. I know this movie is really racist. But man, is this movie fun! It's just fun. It is. I I love the ninjas. Uh, yes, I, I love the volcano layer. Yes, uh, this, is, this is what sparked my my love for volcanoes, giant villain layers, and all three of the, we'll get into the other two, but all three of these movies had them, and I absolutely love them. I, you've got the volcano layer, you've got the underwater layer, and you have a space layer. So you covered all three gigantic. I- you know, I got jokes to make when we get to the Roger Moore ones about the <laughs> villains, who they would be in real life. Ooh, I might, I might have, I might have. Is this a space race idea, conversation? But, <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but, this movie has ninjas in a volcano lair, and I'm sorry, but and I love the uh, 1960s Japan look in the movie. It looks really cool. Oh, why did you? And, I was I was talking to Lindsay, and I, I'm a huge fan of National Geographic, right? And I years ago I I bought a an entire library full of them, and they went back to the 40s. And my uh, one of the jobs I had, I was able to take them in and read them. So. I told her that's that's one of the reasons why I love these old James Bonds, especially the ones that, that have been cleaned up a lot and remastered where the colors just pop. It's like looking at colorized photos of National Geographic from the 50s and 60s and 70s, just the aesthetic and the look of it. And I'm with you. I That, that 60s Japan look is awesome. I, that's what I've always loved about uh, you only live twice. Honestly, re-watching these movies, and I think my opinion will stay the same, I think what holds the Connery ones up is not him as the character, but it's more the aesthetic and the look of the film, and it just mm-hmm. fits for the stories they're telling in the time period. Right. I think I think it's more because, yeah, Connery's a good Bond, but, like, I don't think he's the definitive actor for the role. I know, shots fired. Don't, don't, no, no, don't at me over here. I was just my honest well, opinion. He, Slow down, Bond bros. It's okay. I, I, like, I know I'm trying not to rate him now, but, you know, after... I, it's after, the aesthetic and the the the... the photography and the fact that it's, it's a little bit more serious at least well as serious as they could i mean this one destroy. is getting on the verge it's not as bad as right. diamonds are forever but this is where they're definitely going more into a silly tone i mean the script's written by roll doll of all people <laughs> yeah <laughs> oh my gosh so that's that's why that's why we get the um, the infamous yellow face. Oh yes, yeah, that's terrible. I can't believe that that was a subplot in the movie. A, like a giant hairy Scottishman <laughs> posing as an Oriental gentleman was is just beyond. It makes your soul cringe. It cringes yeah. all the way down to the bone. It's like mm-hmm. man, so that's, inc- that's, inc- that's incredible. But like, can I get a Tiger Tanaka spinoff besides being just a cool name? Can I just get a spy movie with him and his ninjas? Right. Oh, you know, and they he can go back. The real James Bond, the real MVP <laughs> of this one. You know what they could do is they could totally go back 
And now that you say that, they could recast it and have it pick up after the events of You Only Live Twice, and they could intercut it with cl- like classic footage. Oh my you know, gosh, that'd be really cool. Like towards the like at the beginning of it, like you see Bond Lee or they have a conversation and they leave and then it picks up and it starts this whole new adventure. You're onto something, Cody. I like that. I mean, that he's a cool character. All. Yeah, yeah. He he's... has James Bond confidence. I almost, like, at first I thought he was a villain character. I was waiting for, like, villain things to happen. He has the confidence. He he's not as James cocky. James Bond confidence. He's just, like, on his game. It kind of makes Sean Connery look that much <laughs> worse for it. Yeah. Yeah, he's got a ninja school and an underground train that he travels by. What does he even need James Bond's help for? Jeez. I love the training montage. It makes me think of Wayne's World, where he opens up the oh yeah the door, and they're all like training, <laughs> and they're all like training and stuff. In That's one great. single area, like one tiny room. Yeah, they're throwing ninja stars over each other's heads, like they're doing backflips and setting off smoke bombs. It's great, and the ropes. You got to have ropes. But uh, but yeah, man, I I'm totally about this one. Uh. It, it, like you said, it's a, it's a fun, uh, it's a fun movie, and uh, it's crazy that you said it was <laughs> written by Raul, uh, Raul Dahl. Uh, Raul Dahl, thank you, because uh, that I keep I remember hearing that like ages ago, and then I just I I, I forget every time. And that just that blows my mind. What do we think of Donald Pleasance as Blofeld? We finally get to see Blofeld's face. The exact look they copy for Dr. Evil. Yeah, I did like... Because um, it's a memorable look for a villain. Yeah. That I, poor cat, though, man. Every scene where things are like exploding <laughs> around that cat, you could just see him like pinning the cat in his arms, like trying yeah. to keep his villain cool. I did like him as Blofeld, though. Yeah, he's not my favorite, but I do enjoy him. He's having fun. He's definitely better actor as Blofeld than uh, the guy that played him in Diamonds and Forever, who shows up in this movie, which I like him much better in this role as yeah. Henderson yeah. than as Blofeld. And he's no Tolis of all us, so... Yeah, yeah, that's that's my favorite Blofeld. Is it? I was gonna ask if that was if Tully was your favorite. I do like Tully. He's got he's smooth. But uh, man, there was something else that I had that I was thinking about earlier, and I was like, I'm gonna bring that up. It'll it'll pop into my head. A little less rapey of James Bond in this one. Still, you know, not great. He's still being his misogynistic self, but I didn't see too many red flags in this one as I did in Thunderball and Goldfinger. I think at this point, you're just like, it's just like such a barrage from Sean Connery's James Bond anyways. That you're just like, yeah. Sounds the, right. the names were a little more tame. Were they? I thought Kissy Suzuki was in this one. Uh... Not Kissy Suzuki. What's the other one that I... Uh, oh, I had a whole list of their names. No, well, it's not it's Chew Me. That was from Man with the Golden Gun. That's right. Chew Me is Chew previous me. one. No, there was another one. I had a whole long list of them. That's okay. I'll find my list of Bond romans later. <laughs> well, uh... Man, I can't remember what I was going to say. I mean, anyway. this isn't a deep thinking one. It's it's pretty much you know, yeah. It, shut your brain off and watch a Bond movie. Yeah. Again, they get into the spectacle. I think I think it's more of the spectacle of it. You know, like yeah, what can we is... do at the end to wrap this up? You know, this is going to be. It's a slow burn up to the end. Yeah, so they, it's they like were man, definitely trying to one up what they did in Thunderball. 
So they're like, oh, well, how do we want up Thunderball where we were like underwater for like almost a whole hour? Oh, let's do a volcano layer. Right. Yep. That's it. Secret volcano layer. Yeah, they got it with that one. When I become a rich villain, villain, super villain. I'm sure Elon Musk or Bezos will beat us to the. Uh, I guarantee you, they already have one. I'm pretty sure they they already secret volcano layer. I have a feeling Elon Musk is going to be dumb enough to have a layer like uh, what's his name's from Moonraker, where you launch a rocket inside a structure. (laughs) <laughs> is it super safe to do so? Yeah, Elon's got the outer space layer already. No, he yeah. doesn't. And He's Bezos, not smart enough. Bezos has the has the volcano layer or the underwater layer. Okay. So I wasn't gonna say anything yet, but yeah, definitely Moonraker. If was a if Drax was a real person, that would be Elon yeah. Musk. And if <laughs> yeah. Stromberg from from the Spy Who Loved Me was a real person, that would be James Cameron. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, that would I can see it. <laughs> I'm going to rebuild the world and make my movies down here. No, <laughs> nobody can tell me no. Oh my god. <laughs> I will rebuild movies in my image. <laughs> underwater. Yeah. <laughs> All underwater. <laughs> but do you guys have anything uh, really to yeah. Say about you only live twice. I love Kissy Suzuki's bangs. I had to really yes. fight an urge to go chop some like grade school bangs, and mm-hmm. they were solid. But that's and it. That's that's the bond. She's the one that dies, right? Kissy. Yeah. Darcy. Mm-hmm. I'm getting the movie and the book <clears throat> confused now because. <laughs> In the book, I I read both wikis just to see what gets changed. Does she die? I don't even remember anymore. Hold on. No, she well, makes it. They, they crawl into the raft at the end. That's right. Oh, she's the one that. She better ask how many other ladies the... have been in that raft with James Bond because I know <laughs> I've seen that shot before. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they repeat that a lot. So she's the one that they set up as his fake wife. Okay. Yes, and he's like, yeah. "Well, people are gonna think we're not really married if you don't like <laughs> sleep with me all the time or something." That jerk. Okay, I don't know what the other lady's name was that was in the beginning of or before that scene happens before the fake marriage. The other spy girl. Mm. Oh, that's right. She gets poisoned. Mm-hmm. She does die. Because they drip the that str- the poison down that string, like she just happens to roll over. I tell you, Bond is just—he'd have been dead ten times over. It's like he just looked that there happened to be girls at this certain to time. To take a yeah, or a poison like, string. These poor the girls face. take all the death, and they yep. <laughs> either by either by happenstance or just they're they're they just there. And there, yeah, there are Bond times survives he just purely out by luck. Or... Yeah, he bends down or One rolls over or just walks out of the way. The but, big uh, difference between this and the book, though, is that in the book, this is the sequel to On Her Majesty's Secret Service. So Bond is like out for revenge against Blofeld in that yes. one. Whereas they did this before Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Right. Yeah, that I mean that makes more sense. And but, uh, I'm I think the book is more racist too than the movie from what I've heard. The what now? The book is more racist than the movie as well, just like when we were talking about Live and Let Die. Oh no. Yeah. I wonder how. I, well, no, I actually I don't want to know how it can be more racist than it already is. I'll just go with the movie. <laughs> oh, Safe man. bet, but despite cringiness that's in this plot, I have a lot of fun with this movie. I kind of, I kind of like it more than um, 
It's actually my favorite one of the three we're watching, even though I know that's blasphemous because I know a lot of people think The Spy Who Loved Me is like one of the best James Bond movies ever made. And, really and also, I kind of like it more than Thunderball. <laughs> well, no, I do like... I do like... I would have to say I like The Spy Who Loved Me more than Thunderball. Yeah, me too. Um, I was okay. Just... Okay. I thought you meant uh, if you liked it better than uh... Oh, I'm getting them mixed up, Cody. Go ahead. I'm just going to be quiet. <laughs> no, it's fine. I'm just saying I enjoy You Only Live Twice more than either The Spy Who Loved Me or Thunderball. It's more fun to me. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, that one... I love the big the underwater layer gets me every time, man. Because like when you you see the volcano layer and you're like, oh, that's awesome, and you're like, okay, that's that's cool. It was practical. They built it on a set, you know. That's you just like you'll see more layers, but the, it, it won't be any more awesome than you know an actual volcano. And then you see this this ridiculous underwater layer. Which is amazing because I love how the windows in his uh, <laughs> the windows magnify the fish like they look <laughs> like giant goldfish, giant sea fish and stuff. It's great. Yeah. So, is it just me or does Stromberg's lair look like he's a member of the Legion of Doom? Yes, that's where I couldn't. I was trying to place that. Thank you, Cody. That does look like Legion of Doom. <laughs> Something from Legion of Doom. I'm like, are the super friends showing up to help on? <laughs> Where's Aquaman? I'm just waiting for Aquaman to show up. Right? It's in the water. Where's Aquaman? <laughs> yes. So, by a lot of people, and especially Bond fan standards, this is considered the best of the Roger Moore movies. And then, while I think it is definitely a good movie, I think this is finally where they get out of like worrying about Sean Connery and let Roger Moore kind of be the character this time. I right. think this, I th even though I like this movie and it's it's fun, I think it's a tad overrated. Honestly, yeah, I think. I don't know. It's it's hard to. I don't want to say overrated, but maybe overrated is the wrong word. But I don't love it as much as some Bond fans do. But I know that a lot of that's nostalgia. I know a lot of it is like is like what Golden Eye is probably to us is what it is to some Bond fans of a certain age. Yeah, I think it just it's. I'll put it to you this way. It's kind of like the Star Wars prequels. I think you just had to have been there and then it either clicked with you or it didn't. And I think that's, you know, you've got Bond fans like us who only, you know, who started watching GoldenEye, the, the Brazen years. And that that's our Bond, really. Uh, you know, we weren't old enough to watch these older films, these older bonds. And I think the, the people who were there and caught them and they were like, yeah, that's my bond. You know, you're going to, you're going to have those people who are just diehard, uh, you know, Oh no, it's Sean Connery or no, nobody, or it's, you know, well, I'm all about Roger Moore or you've got maybe the three people out there that are like, no, I'm, I'm straight up, you know, <laughs> Dalton, <laughs> Dalton, which I love Dalton. But... I love Dalton too. Um, I think he might be, like you said, I don't want to really rank him, but I think he might be my second favorite Bond. Oh, same here. I, I, I liked him more than, now I liked Brosnan, but they were still playing his really silly. Like, uh, mm -hmm. He's, he's like he, his was just a continuation of Roger Moore in my eyes. Well, like it just, well, I think it's a little not as silly. I think it's like a cross between Connery and Moore together. Yeah, I can honestly. see that. 
but uh yeah this is a this is a good this is definitely an improvement over the first two roger moore movies as far as a movie and what moore's doing as the character i mean he's not doing really much but they're letting him be james bond in this one like they're not worried about like well people won't you know, accept him if he's drinking. Like, he finally gets to drink a martini in this one. Right. He's not smoking a cigar. Actually, I don't think he smokes at all in this one. So maybe Roger Moore wasn't a smoker. Well, no, didn't he have the cigarettes? The one that exploded? Or had the, the bullet in it? The rocket? That's You Only Live Twice, where he had the oh, gun that's right. cigarette. Now, I'm, I'm, Agent Triple X has the the sleep dust or whatever on her cigarettes. Yes, that's it. And this is a great character on paper. And this is finally the first time where they try to create a character that's like of Bond's equal. Yeah. You know. I don't think uh, Barbara Bach, Mrs. Ringo Starr, is... I don't know if the material's not there. Or she's just not the best of actors. Uh, or yeah. there's like a language barrier, maybe. <laughs> I don't I don't know. I'm not trying to knock her down because I think it is an interesting concept and I'm glad, you know, they were trying to do even in the seventies, we're like trying to progress and give something more to the female character than what had been done in the past. Right. <coughs> but Jaws, Jaws is freaking cool. Oh, I love Jaws. He's one of my favorite henchmen or villains. And it's not, I don't know. I just, I've always liked Richard Keel. You know, I liked him in a lot of the B movies that he did uh, before this. And after this, you know, but, uh, uh, I do like his character, and he de- he does kind of uh, redeem himself, and we'll get into that here in a little bit. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but uh, I I don't know if that's I don't know if that's the direction they should have taken his character, but I did like him in this movie, like especially when he shows up at the pyramids. <laughs> oh, that's so cool! Like with the music and the reveals and everything. Yeah, yeah. I always liked it where he's just sitting in the dark and then the lights come on, he's there, and then it you know goes dark again. And like you said, with the music and it just all fit really well. Yeah, that's a great scene. Uh, I love the opening. I know the opening of this movie is very memorable because he, you know, he jumps off the cliff on his skis with the Union Jack parachute. Yeah, yeah, that ski chase was pretty pretty sweet. With the machine guns and stuff, and and then you're just like, man, there's no way in hell Roger Moore. He's too old to be doing all that stuff. <laughs> ah, man. But yeah, you can read. You can really start telling. Like there are certain shots or fight scenes where like everyone around him was doing all the karate stuff, and he's just kind of like Steven Seagal in it, where he just kind of like. <laughs> He'll throw some punches, maybe get his leg up, you know, a little off the ground, whatever. I mean, he's still got it. He's still got it. And uh, he's still he's still landing some punches and stuff. But you can tell, like, he's, he's on up in age. Like, this is definitely an older Bond. And there's a shot in Moonraker. <laughs> I know I keep jumping to Moonraker, but this it applies to this movie, too, where, like... I don't know. There, there's certain shots of him that just really show his age, and you're like, damn. Like, it showed him marching through the jungle, and you know how Bond is always poshly dressed, you know, no matter what he's doing. He'll be in a suit, you know, marching through the jungle, but uh, you could definitely tell that that Roger Moore was more of the posh James Bond. Like, they're, they're all posh in a way, but, so, you know, there are a few Bonds that, that, that'll that get down and dirty and, you know, roll around in the mud and stuff like that, but not Roger Moore. He's going to be upright walking through the jungle. He's not going to get dirty. He was like, 
<laughs> the way he was lit with the watch and he was like ow ow thorns ew gross is that a he's buzz? he's the oh. least physical of the bonds yeah right? <laughs> like he's like the perfect british gentleman of 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 the bonds like he's the one that would be like all about the manners and yes he seems like the James Bond that would deduce, oh, you don't know the right wine, so there's something up here. <laughs> right. Are we talking about how James Bond is a mansplainer chronically? I'll talk about that. No. Oh, how did you like uh, how did you like Roger Moore's dad jokes, especially towards Agent Triple X and her driving? Yeah. Oh yeah. Just the entire time. No, it's like, hold on. Just now, now that someone has said it's like your dad being James Bond, it really does see that because the age difference between these women and Roger Moore is like very noticeable. And it's like, oh, it's like my dad trying to go out on a date <laughs> with... <laughs> Was someone much younger than him. And the way Lindsay brought the way he's kissing these women, like he's pressing into their faces, like he's trying to <laughs> take their soul. <laughs> yeah, like I'm like, dude, I know you I know you're supposed to phone it in like you're acting and you're supposed to phone it in. He's and, taking his shots where he's but he's down. like he's taking full advantage. He's like, No, I'm gonna lick the bottom of her feet. Like yeah, I'm just gonna exactly. that's how far I'm gonna stick my inside. tongue. Down her throat. Yeah, I know. Ah, <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, it's definitely... <sighs> I really love these movies, guys. I really do. But you once you... Love something when you go it. back... When you go back... Like, I've just watched them for fun up until this point. But now I've gone back to really just... Like, soak it in, soak it in for these... To discuss them... And to maybe pick up on things that I've missed in the past. But man. And there's just something new every time you revisit an old Yeah, you just like that makes you go, hey. <laughs> you're like, what the hell? How, how is this how did this get in there? Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, besides that, at this point the franchise is feeling a bit cliche, right? Even though this is one of the better more ones, you know, it's like, okay, I've seen this. I, yeah, yeah, that's what James Bond oh, yeah. does. Like, and no disrespect to, I don't think really until the Craig era, they really try to make James Bond like an actual three dimensional character. I think like he's just a, he's just like a dude wandering around. He's a walking boner with a drinking problem that has a license to kill. Yeah, just but, the type of person you want to have that license. <laughs> but I mean, like, I, I he's not really doing anything. He's just like a title character in a plot that could function without him. Absolutely. Absolutely. Like, especially this one. Like, Triple X could have handled this all on her own. Yeah. <laughs> and without the snide comments from Dad Bond... And I really wish, and like I know, you know, it's a James Bond movie, so he's gotta, he's gotta get the girl. But like, with, especially with this, <laughs> with Russia and England teaming up, and Bond had killed her love lover. Like, I really wish oh, yeah. there would have been more of that uh, conflict in the movie instead of that weird fairy tale. Oh, everything's fine. We're yeah. Not dead. <laughs> Like, oh, it's okay. I forgive you for killing my lover. You're just too irresistible, James. Yeah. But uh, I don't sense. really like Stromberg as a villain. He's just kind of whatever, you know? Yeah. He seems I mean, like he'd be perfectly neutral if people just left him alone with his sharks and his <laughs> spider sea center, whatever that's Well, about. I mean, he didn't want to nuke the world, so... Right, which, 
which I was like, oh wow, they did that in the seventies. That's pretty interesting. Like he had like an, an he's like an envir eco terrorist. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, granted, he just wanted to create an underwater society, but he was, you know, he was pulling for water world too hard. <laughs> Well, hey, did you notice that they use they kind of okay? Do you think this was on purpose or just coincidental that they man with the golden gun? It seemed they kind of villainized solar power too in a way, and they also oh, did it. Oh, like do they, you they, think the Bond franchise or Hollywood was like trying to like because you know this was going on in the seventies with the energy crisis? Right, all those hippie the, tree hugger terrorists and, out there. Yeah, they're gonna so, blow their whole family up. And gas went up when Jimmy Carter was president. So, yeah, like, you know, it's part Sweet. of the frustration we have with, like, the technologies. Like, they had stuff to do this, like, 40, 50 years ago. But then, you know, oil and all these other people put right. their money in, like, no, we don't need that. Let's keep it so, the way it is. Something to think about, because I just, I was thinking about that. Uh, after watching that movie, I was like, wow, you know, I noticed that. Or actually, I noticed that when I was watching uh, Man with the Golden Gun. And I, I don't think I brought it up. And I think I was meaning to. I just didn't think about it. Was the fact that they were, they were kind of villainizing solar power in a way by doing that. Because he made, he made a comment. And I'm going to have to go back and find it. Bonded about solar power and it was mm. like a disparaging remark like he was like oh well, you know solar power will be the death of us or something something along the lines of that you know just a little spit on the clean energy it, it was yeah it was it was kind of like a dig at the clean energy so yeah you know when you think about it that, that is kind of interesting that they do have kind of a, an eco-terrorist with nukes and um that 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 is the plot so something to think about. Is it a little on the nose? I like that it's it's pretty cool that Jaws actually fights a shark at the end of the movie. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that was great. That was good stuff. That poor fake rubber shark. <laughs> no, there was a shot of that fight where it looks like he does like la he does like put his arms around a real shark and the shark's like, hey, like, no, oh, thank you. Then yeah, it's a fist fight. He bites into the shark. I yeah. know. Poor baby. Poor Richard Keel. I heard that mouthpiece was like. It makes my horrible, mouth horrible, like to wear. Yeah, like it hurt his mouth really bad. Tell me why. <coughs> excuse me. Tell me why his character didn't get to speak the entire time until right before you think, oh, he's gonna die in outer space. Yeah. Oh, at the end of Moonraker. Really me. That he doesn't get to talk the entire time. He's just this big, muscly, scary, metal mouth man. And then you hear his voice and you're like, he could do audiobooks. He could do radio. He could do anything. I think they were going in the tradition of like, well, let's do another odd job like Kinchman. This big, hulking, silent, menacing character. Yeah. I, yeah. Who was another favorite to play in uh, James in Goldeneye? Why? Why does uh, Agent Triple X? By the way, don't type in Agent Triple X James Bond into your Google. <laughs> <laughs> why does Anya Amasova look just like Mary Goodnight from Man with a Golden Gun? I, I don't know, but do you want to know something? Um more cringy about the Roger Moore era of James Bond. Cringy. More cringy than the dad vibes he's putting off. Mary, the actress who played Mary Goodnight, Brett Eklund, who was married to Peter Sellers, is the young is the oldest Bond girl in the Roger Moore era. Besides Whoa. If you call unless you count Lois Maxwell as Money Penny. As a Bond girl, because she's the same age as Roger Moore. She is a Bond girl. Yeah, she yeah. started getting that old lady hair in this one, in uh, Moonraker. Were they, and, uh, was that to make her look older to show time had passed? Because we could all tell looking at Roger Moore's face that James <laughs> yeah. Bond got a lot older from the last movie. Yeah, and 
and their age difference, I think, is 15 years. And that's, <gasps> the, that's the closest age range of the Bond women for Roger Moore. Damn it, son. That's Woo! disgusting. Because, because, yeah, Barbara Bach is... Twin Barbara Brock and Lois Childs are both 20 years younger than Roger Moore. 20. Mm. Wow. You know what? I'm you, I'm going to be quiet because there are cons I know consenting adults that are that that far for, apart. Yeah, we know. And you trust I, I mean, I'm not we know to, I'm, I'm not, not here to judge anyone. relationships as long as they're both adults and it's consenting, but you can just tell (laughs) that he's a little too old to be playing a romantic lead and if you're gonna do an older bond play with it you know play with his age Mm. let him get snubbed by a few cute young girls and then be like oh yeah i'm definitely (laughs) what what year is it how old am i (laughs) no anya amasova and and mary goodnight I know they're different actresses, but they, it's like almost the exact same Bond girl look. Mm-hmm. And then you move on to Moonraker to uh, Holly Goodhead, and it's just a tiny oh, little Lordy. shift in their look, but they're still, <coughs> they have the same hair shape and silhouette. They have the big twiggy eyes, the big blue eyes, which I'm sure was the thing. But three whole movies in a row, we couldn't get anybody that looked a little bit different. <laughs> I, I guess there was a look at, that they wanted at that time period. Uh, Same director. Maybe I know it, was it was the, the director. Thing. I know the big twiggy <clears throat> eyes and the big woo, hair. I know well, was Lewis all Gilbert alive. didn't do Man with the Golden Gun. That was Guy Hamilton. But That's right. you know, there's a lot of different create. Like the directors really are just kind of there to do the job. They're not really in charge of like the movie. That's that's Albert R. Broccoli at this point. You know, he's the he's the guy running the show. Yeah. Of these movies. He was the Wizard of Bond. Uh-huh. But yeah, this is a solid movie. I think, you know, this is finally the one where you're like, okay, they're letting Roger Moore be Bond now. They're not worried about mm-hmm. Sean Connery. But I don't love this movie like some other Bond fans do. I think it's just a solid Bond film. Right. Well, there's a formula, and if you don't stray from it too far, you you can't you, you can accidentally make a very good one. Like mm-hmm. you just have to check the boxes. Yeah. Uh, anything some boxes else? Are before, worse than others. Anything else before we get? Oh, well, I'll bring it up because they do it more in Moonraker. Um, so I'll bring it up then. But is there anything else we want to talk about with the Spy Who Loved Me before we get to the batshit craziness of Moonraker? <laughs> oh, uh, the theme song. Uh, Nobody yes, does it better. By, yes, by Carly <laughs> Simon. Yes, great, it's it's great song. It's up there in probably the top five. Uh, Absolutely for, for myself. So yes, Carly Simon, good stuff. Uh, anyway, yeah, I mentioned that. That's good. I also like that. Nancy Sinatra's You Only Live Twice. That's a pretty good song, too. Yeah, that is. It had a very, uh, not really, your boots have made for walking, but I mean, it's it's a very again, Sinatra it's song. Once again, the support it's a, of a great theme song holding up James Bond. Yeah. It's another Wait. version of his dumb luck that he falls <laughs> into. They, they always wanted Frank Sinatra to do a Bond song, but he never did one. And if you notice, the guy who sings from Russia with Love sounds a little bit like Frank Sinatra. Yeah. Yeah. So I guess you know. Well, we can't get Frank. We'll get we'll get his daughter. And she killed it. Yeah, she, she nailed crushed it. it. So speaking of songs, the great Shirley Bassey, who's probably did the best Bond song of all time, and Diamonds Are Forever is pretty decent, but God bless her, and God bless them trying to make a song called Moonraker, because, yeah. It was uh, just the time <laughs> they they ended on disco, 
you know, the outro was a disco version of that song. So you can know, you know, the time period it was in. Did you? Uh, it's one of the weakest themes, in my opinion. Yeah. Did you like the whatever Hamlish guys score for the spy little disco trend on the Bond theme? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I enjoy all of that. Um, again, it to me, it, it's the whole aesthetic. Of, of of getting to watch these by decade is is one of the best parts to me. They're little time passes, and just like he, I was I was telling Lindsay I was like it's fun to see James go uh, James Bond go from uh, a tapered well fit tux into a seventies bell bottomed leisure suit with those lapels. leisure suit tux. Uh, you know. It's just fun. It's fun to see the styles. I do the, feel like they were definitely dressing the music, the dad and, bod a little bit more, like oh, yeah, yeah, the longer coats, more pockets, more distracting, or yeah. it's really dark and all black. We forgot to talk about the underwater car. That was cool. Oh, Ooh, that was. I slick. love that. Yeah, that, that lotus. Was real nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that lotus is really sweet. That sub car was always one of my favorite vehicles but moonraker call me crazy but is this basically they took they were like okay the spy who loved me james bond's back it's huge it's popular again because the man with the golden gun did not do well almost mm -hmm. ended the franchise uh, wow and i enjoyed that one. do you think it was the transition from was i don't know really because good. live and let die did very well so I don't know if maybe people are like, I don't know about this this one. <laughs> but then something happened with Harry Saltzman or whatever his name was, the guy who used to co-produce with Albert Broccoli. Because if you uh -huh. notice, it just says Albert Broccoli now on yeah. these other two. But yeah, Spy Who Loved Me, hugely popular. They were supposed to do for your eyes only next. If you notice at the end of the Spy Who Loved Me, it says James Bond will return and for your eyes only. Uh, but the success of Star Wars, they're like, well, we got to do yeah. space. People love space. Yep. Yeah. But we and really the, didn't and the, actually <clears throat> break any moons. Those that was the, disappointing. They had just introduced the new space shuttle that they were using. Like a couple of years earlier, like that was the big, that was the next big space shuttle. So of course, you know, that's going to be a cool vehicle to show everyone. Okay, well, correct me if I'm just talking crazy, but does Moonraker just feel like they copy and pasted the Spy Who Loved Me? But they're like, okay, well, instead of water, it's space now. Yep, that's pretty much. Pretty much. I he feel like it's the arc. same movie. Yeah. Except they double down on like, they double down on the silliness. Like, because in The Spy Who Loved Me, we got the guy who does the double take, right? When they come out of the ocean, yes. on the Lotus yeah. with, with the his wine. Mm -hmm. They did it again in Moonraker, but everybody's He's doing good. a double take. Even a friggin' pigeon did a double take. I saw the. What the a well edit, trained pigeon. Where like, is that oh, pigeon's acting no. award? Yeah, they definitely, it's like seeing recycled animation in Disney movies, <laughs> like yeah. Robin Hood and 101 Dalmatians and Jungle Book, all those that you can find, Winnie the Pooh. That was in the 70s too, though, that they were, yeah, they were just recycling. like, eh, you know, same idea. Well, it's like them bringing back Sheriff Buford, oh, T. God. or whatever the fuck his name was, you know. Yeah, oh. let's, uh uh, yeah, and then share from Louisiana. <laughs> so you know, the spy who loved me is not. It's kind of a more um, tapered Roger Moore movie compared mm -hmm. to these other three. Maybe that's why it's the popular Roger Moore's because it is kind of a more tame. But there's one instance I forgot. I didn't know it was in the movie, and it made me roll my eyes. Is when they're walking in the desert. And they start playing the Lawrence of Arabia score. <laughs> yes. And they do this. I think there are at least three movies they reference in Moonraker. I think they, they play a little bit of 2001 in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Of course, there is the close encounters is the password to get in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then they're playing the Magnificent Seven theme as he's riding a horse and have him dressed as if he's Clint Eastwood. Well, and that's why I those are actually because... not to sound like Cliff Clavin here, but those are actually Chilean cowboys and they do dress like that. And they okay, well, why is Roger Moore dressed like that? Well, I thought that he had to like ride with them, maybe, but yeah, it doesn't really make any sense, does it? <laughs> and I, I don't, I, dress like Clint Eastwood. yeah, I, I don't buy Roger Moore in that get up. I'm like, what are you doing, Roger Moore? Get out of that outfit, He's a silly man. Right? <laughs> yeah, there's no way you can't pull it off, like wearing a bunny costume on the yeah. set. I don't know if there's another Caucasian male I can buy in that outfit other than Clint Eastwood. Did you know where I learned that? National Geographic you, kids. National Geographic. Yeah. I I have read through every decade and they are amazing. You should uh, check it out. You can get them digital, folks. But uh I am going to disagree with some people cuz a lot of people like <coughs> to well, I guess this is a very divided Bond movie. There are people who swear this is the worst Bond movie ever. <laughs> and there are other people who are like, "You know what? I just love it for its silliness." Uh, no, the worst Bond movie ever was James Bond number 20. Die Another Day? Yes. That Die is Another the worst Day. One. That is the oh. worst James Bond, hands down, and the worst theme song, hands down. But um, we'll get into that. My main thing with this is Moonraker actually is a fairly solid Bond movie up until they leave Drax State. Once he goes... After he goes, after he leaves Drax's estate, the movie just gets worse and worse for me. Like <laughs> it's like not a bad one. It's 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 down the middle for me. You know, it's not one that I'll go to over and over again. But I do like to go back and revisit. Like it's a fun movie. You know, which is a shame because I think Michael Lonsdale as a Bond villain is actually a really good Bond villain. It's just that he's in a friggin' ridiculous movie yeah so i don't know if this is where we have our kingdom of the crystal skull argument and you tell me if i can buy preposterous things in other bond movies like a volcano lair why i can't i buy <laughs> buy james bond in space but i really can't it's, it just yeah, kind of takes me out of the movie i don't know i liked it i liked the space it, it reminded me of the underwater fight i scene. wanted to see a moon raking I didn't see any moon <laughs> yeah. James Bond fist fights, and it doesn't count in a space station. Though so everybody's uh, space station body acting, yeah, they're, is the best. Everybody looks like they're, they're super slow, drunk, yeah, or super sleepy. <laughs> and then everyone's shooting off. And where did they get that technology? Because I'm pretty sure we still don't have that technology. <laughs> Are we right. talking about the space battle with everybody wearing those rocket packs and they're just like drifting towards each other like schools of fish? Hey, that was awesome though. And then all those lasers start going and off. And they were just like, yeah, that just was get like, back on the spaceship. We that gotta was, get back to Earth. That was straight up G.I. Joe the movie stuff right there. And I loved every bit of it. <laughs> I just know how hard it is to actually be in outer space. And I just, and those laser you know. noises, I was like, oh, that's straight up. You know, that's awesome. I love it. But what is moon raking? I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't is know what it, that means. Is it like raking just below the expectations for this movie? Just like and starting to burn <laughs> up on re-entry where you're skipping on the Earth's atmosphere? Because I feel like that's where it falls. I I wanted there to be more space than there was. Yeah. And the you moon. Know what, How fun would it be to fight on the surface of the moon in a movie? You know, you know what, Lindsay? I think I agree with you. If they're going to go there, they need to go all out instead of like just kind of teasing us and then just throwing it in at the end of the movie. Like, oh, here it is. Because then it does yeah, the feel like it's coming, but yeah. it doesn't until the very end. Because then it does feel out of place. Like, if they had just went with it from the very get go, then you'd be like, okay, this movie's stupid and ridiculous. <laughs> I'm on board. We're in outer space at least. Yeah. But no, it's like, okay, we're going to start out with a blonde plot, but then no, we're going to get silly and sillier and sillier. And then, and then we're bam, just... Star Wars. Yep. <laughs> you guys like Star Wars, right? Well, now James Bond meets Star Wars. Yeah. 
Good for them, though. You know, the redeeming part for this movie for me was that Jaws finally found happiness. Someone who appreciates him and understands. That's <laughs> why he's gonna smother in bed. It just well, she he, she's so tiny. <laughs> she <laughs> saved it's his like life. A small dog. Yeah, she saved his life. And now he's no longer an evil person because he's not part of. Um, what was Drax's... that? He was like Jaws. The thing stuck. Help us out! And he's like, "You got it, James." Like they didn't just spend well, the last two movies. It's because he sat there making out trying to kill each other. And he other. was like, "Well, Drax is going to euthanize you because you're a freak." Oh, you're not genetically you're not, pure. You're not perfect. And that's when he was like, "Oh yeah, ding ding ding." And he's like, oh, I guess so. And then he like that was still out. so <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, it's a very random and like, why are you gonna take one of the coolest henchmen bad guys and turn him into a good guy? No, no, yeah. no. He deserves to get to be a good guy. But yeah, it is very silly. And oh, well, man, he's ripped speaking a lot of, of Drax's out. plan, he doesn't exactly fit the mold of his like new society he's gonna build right it's very hitler-esque of him to like well i'm gonna create these beautiful people but you know come on drax it feels very yeah it feels very (laughs) i said hitler youth at least once when all those people were in that space shuttle and they're all like supposed to be genetically perfect they're like but look we've got some people with red hair and dark hair and we have one token black guy in the back we're like there's diversity but it's not. <laughs> well, yeah, out of the 50 white couple, there was one black couple and one Asian couple uh, there. So, you know, come on, Drax. All these, all these you gotta do fake better. woke villains, I'm sick of it. I know you're a bad guy, bad guy, but you need a little bit more diversity. A little bad bit guy better. there. Oh, my gosh. And his, I don't know, I feel like his death was really easy. Fast, it was but easy, the but... worst pun ever. <laughs> the whole movie. The best pun came from Q, though. The best line. Yeah, he gets the touchdown of puns at the very end. He gets end. the touchdown at the end of the movie, and you're like, "Oh, oh my gosh!" <laughs> they did they, they the movie on that. Man. It also, how does James movie. Bond still have a job as many times as they've caught him doing that? Like, right? Hmm. He has a license to kill and another license that they don't talk about in polite company. Well, if those women are anything like the Black Widow, <laughs> the Black Widows have taught us, maybe they're they're sterile, and they can, you know, hold up against James Bond super. Spy sperm, uh, sperm. Were you going yeah, for I alliteration? Think... <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't want to upset anyone, but I think if James Bond had to actually fight a black widow, I think James Bond would get his butt kicked. It oh, would be would. the biggest yeah. butt kicking, it would be over so fast. Speaking of Hawkeye, was really good. I like that series. Oh, yeah, I didn't. Hawkeye I didn't I was entertaining so now i don't have to tell you not who was the big reveal of the bad guy because you know oh now. dude that that has us watching uh uh daredevil now like we're oh yeah we started all the defenders TV we just series. yeah we're gonna go ahead and do it since they're canon now i guess <laughs> so well i mean daredevil is a very good show whether it's canon or not oh canon I, yeah it was, yeah, yeah i know like I, we never made it past like the first like i wanted to episode. watch them anyway even if they weren't canon but now that they are i'm like well now i've just absolutely have to make time to watch these so have you yeah, gotten to the episode where they have the hallway fight in season one? Oh yeah like yeah, that's good stuff, yeah. man. I can't wait for that solid comic book fighting. I can't wait for Punisher. We just watched Stick last night. I think that was episode oh, seven. Yeah, so much better than what they did in the Electra movie. Oh yeah. Oh. That's so, good. I'm excited, that's, man. I'm, I'm hooked on them. Daredevil movie in the Electra movie now. Well, well you, technically, technically everything is canon because, because of the multiverse they, now. They, so, oh, I thought you were going to say because they own everything. Well, <laughs> oh, well, 
Have you heard the rumors of who might show up in the multiverse Doctor Strange sequel? I heard Tom Cruise might show up as an alternate uh, Tony, Tony Stark. Stark. Yeah, yeah, because because if you guys don't remember, like he was attached like before MCU was a thing, like in the late nineties, early two thousands, he was attached to play Iron Man. I remember that. I I'd like him to see, I'd like to see them bring the Hoff back as a uh, uh, as Nick Fury. Nick Fury, thank you from the because they did the uh, the Fox movie back in ninety eight. And I've heard TV movie. I've heard suggestions which will drive people crazy because they want him to play Mister Fantastic, but um. I've heard that maybe we might get John Krasinski as an alternate Captain America since he was almost Captain America. Oh my gosh. That'd be pretty cool. But I actually Can you I, I actually kind of want to see him as Mr. Fantastic. I think he'd be fantastic. Well Can you imagine that long ago in your career when you were almost Captain America and is still getting new jobs today? Yeah. That's bananas. Can you imagine? Well, that's job security. Dang. Can you imagine Captain America coming out that long ago? It's been. I don't know what you're talking about. It's been that many movies in between. Yeah, I know that's crazy. Well, I heard a cast. Not that it's it's just someone wish casting, but um, have you guys watched The Good Place? Mm -hmm. No, but I want to. I don't know where else you would recognize this actor from, but he's really good. And since you know Jonathan Majors is playing uh, Kang the Conqueror, there is a guy who plays a character named Chidi who's like a philosophy professor on The Good Place. And his issue is he has a hard time making decisions that like stresses him out and gives him anxiety. Mm hmm. They someone suggested him to play Mr. Fantastic, and I actually think it would be cool. That's cool. Mm. We'll want to look him up. Well, we just and, have to watch the good place because I want to. Yeah. Yeah, you should watch it. It's a it's a really good show. And it's actually a feel good show. So that's cool. Uh, I'm waiting but, for waiting for Spider Man. I haven't seen that yet. And I have I have managed to avoid spoilers. I know who comes back. Obviously. I mean I figured that out. You've been on the internet. Yeah. Yes, but, Topher Grace comes back. <gasps> But I have managed to spoil yeah, just like great. straight up, you know, nitty gritty spoilers. So, or a, or a I'm pretty excited by about that. Spoilers. Yeah, can't wait to see that. But uh, anyway, Moonraker, fun movie. Uh, I like it. Um, it's probably one that again, it's it's lower on the scale. I'd have to say with with uh, my Bond movies, but it's still a fun watch. It's it's, not, it's definitely not Die Another Day. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's not quite on that level. I think I, 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 I definitely like it more than Die Another Day. It might even be better than Diamonds Are Forever, in my opinion. But it's still near the bottom for me. But also, I'm just finding that I'm not a huge fan of the Roger Moore movies. Like, this is just not my this is not my Bond. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, if your dad showed up to play your favorite superhero or whatever your favorite movie franchise was, you'd be yeah. like, oh, okay. I think it just strikes me. It's it's whoever I'm in the mood for. To be honest, like, mm -hmm. there are times where I like, man, I really, I'm, not, I'm, I'll, I'm really in the mood for a quirky. Roger Moore Bond, you know, and then there's times where I'm like, I want, you know, I want to watch Austin Powers with less sex jokes. I'm going to watch Roger Moore's James Bond. <laughs> yeah. You know, but it's, you know, they're, they're fun and they're definitely a product of their, their time, you know, the seventies. So, uh, and early eighties. So yeah. Yeah. Cause he, he's weird. got three more movies, guys. He's got three more movies. Oh, yeah, he does. He's looking ahead a little bit. It's I okay. Just, we get to see, uh, we I, get to see Mayday and Zorn coming up. And... Oh my God. That's such a weird movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it is. Oh, you think he looks old in this one? Wait till you watch that one. Mm. 
<sighs> Something to look forward to. 58 year old Roger Moore. You could definitely tell there's stunt devils in that one. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That's the best part, though. Mm. I just want to say that my feelings are hurt that you hate Die Another Day because that was like the only Bond movie I ever saw come out in theaters. Oh. And it was. Like the first and only. I remember being so disappointed because I'd watched. I thought I remember thinking it was cool, and now I'm Look, like, man. I'd been in there Lindsay, since so I, I'd been in there since what ninety six with Goldeneye. That was ninety five, but yeah. Or ninety five. Was Die Another Day? We, Pierce we get up Brosnan's to, Roger Moore phase as Bond. Is that what you're saying to me? It was ultimately yes. It was mm. bad, Roger Moore. Though I would have rather have gone back and watched a Roger Moore. But I remember going to the theater and I sitting there, and I was like, was first cool. off, I mean, first off, the theme song hit me wrong. Like, I did not like that theme song at all. And I was like, okay, man, theme song, get get over it, Chris. You're you're here for the movie. That's you not can, a good sign, though. The theme song yeah, the, the theme song you're was kind of in trouble already. Yeah, the theme song was not a good sign, and uh, I started getting into it, and I was like. What the hell is it? Because it's supposed to be his last movie, you know? Well, it ended up being his last movie. It wasn't supposed to be his last movie. Oh, see, I always thought it was supposed to be his last. No, it was see, big number 20, and they was, you know, they were, you know, he Daniel was, he Craig was older. Is, Daniel Craig is the only Bond that actually knew it was going to be his last movie while making it. Ah, uh, okay. I thought, like, I didn't. That's why that movie breaks my heart so much. Yeah. I feel it. Oh. Uh, but uh but yeah, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry that it's hurts okay, your feelings. Like, I really that's... haven't seen it since then. But I was I, just like, now oh, look, like that's the only James Bond movie I ever got to go I to really do I know it watch. sounds funny, but I say that lovingly. Like I still like it as being a part it, of the Bond weeks. franchise. Like it it had its moments and <sighs> They had lots of cool gadgets and stuff. It just wasn't my favorite. Like, and that's one that I will openly say, yeah, that's it was it was bad. Did it feel more like I know there's product placement in James Bond, like from the beginning, but did it feel very like a commercially like maybe so brand I don't know. name it just, pluggy type movie? It was I don't know. It was weird. Like, cause I had enjoyed all the Brosnans up until that one. And I just, it, I was very disappointed. Sorry. This it's, went off on a whole nother. It's basically the Batman and Robin of the James Bond franchise. <sighs> Thank you. Yeah. That's it. Like, it's still fun. It's there, but it's, you know, you're like, a, it, it's not very good. It's kind of the only one I'm like, I really don't want to watch this one. Like, even oh, some no. of these ones, <laughs> even some of these other ones where I'm like, I don't really like it. I'm like, oh, I'll watch some of it because there's some cool stuff here or there. But like, but you know, like with watching Moonraker, I think I was on my phone and stuff more than I was with the other two because I, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was a little more engaged in the other two in this one. I'm like, okay, well, Oh, there's a good part. You've already seen that movie previously. Yeah. You just had to look out for the space parts. Yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. like, oh, there it is. <laughs> I yeah, mean, they do have movie. that savage kill of that one lady with the dogs. That was pretty bad. Mm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm going to fire you. What if all employers did that? Like, if you can make it to your car. Hey, don't give and Amazon live, or then... Jeff Bezos any ideas. Yeah. Don't give hey. those guys ideas of how to get rid of yeah. employees. <laughs> Well, I'm pretty. I'm I'm surprised Squid Game didn't give them any ideas. That's kind right. of what it was. But uh, hey, so we're kind of going off topic. What are we gonna do next week? Aren't we doing Groundhog Day? That's right. It is coming <gasps> it's up. Already yeah, Wednesday's Groundhog Day, and I suggested you All guys Groundhog watch. Day, right? Yeah. Yeah. I suggested so you guys funny. also watch Palm Springs. Well, let's Palm Springs. That's right. So we want to do. We want to do a, a double feature, a Palm Springs uh, Groundhog Day double feature. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, I'm okay because I know I we had also mentioned Edge of Tomorrow, but we don't have to do a triple feature 
No, so that's tomorrow. And we just watched that not too long ago. I don't remember what that is. I'm already writing it down. Remember, he has to relive the this battle over and over again. They have these big mech suits, and that's. Do you know what? It's good. It's there it was, is no it, better time than right at the beginning of February to have an existential crisis. So we can go ahead and watch all three. <laughs> Are you sure? You don't feel that way when you watch Groundhog Day or any of those where you're like, you get the same chance over and over and over, and what are you doing with it? Oh. That doesn't what do hit you, you in the dead of winter? Just me? What do okay. you say, Cody? Do you have time for a triple? You don't have you to know. watch it, but maybe we'll watch it just because you mentioned it. It's fine. Yeah, I just got to find... Uh, I guess I'll have to rent it online because... It's oh, don't go, don't like put yourself out. We'll just watch it just because you mentioned it, and we'll be like, Yeah, it's a theme we're doing for this yeah. week, anyways. But we don't have to, like, I can I'm, either that or I can get it to it you. Yeah. They all have the same theme, anyway. I think mm -hmm. that's so, yeah, I'm that'll be you, that'll that's be a fun. Great win winter movie marathon, yeah. And we'll then, it's supposed so to be raining. Yeah, so, we'll take a break from James Bond for at least two weeks. Unless, unless Lindsay, you want to do your birthday picks like after your birthday, because I know your birthday is on Valentine's Day, right? I don't even know what day that is yet. Hold on. I need to learn what day that's on. You do. It's not your birthday. Why do you need to learn? I just forget that I have a uh, birthday until it gets here. It's a double whammy. It's your birthday and Valentine's Day. That just means you lucked out because you get a gift on my birthday. Um, yeah, I'm fine with doing them after. That's fine with me. You want to do it? So you want to do it? The 16th. You want to do it the 16th instead of whatever that Wednesday before is the 9th, I think? Yeah. That just gives me more time to really think about it. Okay. So do you guys want to do the weird Sean Connery double feature the week in between then? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, because this is what I'm thinking for our next... Because we're going by director-based. Uh -huh. Since the next one is on Her Majesty's Secret Service and Peter Hunt only directed that one, I kind of want to pair that with um, No Time to Die. Yeah, we, no could, do, we could do that. That'd be so, fun. So I feel like if we're going to do that, then we got to kind of go way forward and cover the Craig era because you kind of have to <sighs> kind of have to cover all those other movies where you get to no time to die. Well, why don't we do, why don't we save? I'm going to do Craig James Bond. Those are good. Yeah, but I would, why don't we do, why don't we do No Time to Die, Honor Majesty's Secret Service? No. Well, here's what I'm thinking when we cover Craig to get there. So the next Bond run we should cover, I think, since Martin Campbell did Casino Royale, we'll do GoldenEye and Casino Royale because he did both of those. So we'll do uh -huh. one Brosnan and one Craig. That sounds good. Then we'll do... This is going to be a weird one, but... So I'm going to take one John Glenn just because they have similar plots. We're going to do, I think, For Your Eyes Only with Quantum of Solace. Okay. And then Skyfall and Spectre because they're both done by Sam Mendes. And then mm -hmm. Honor Majesty's Secret Service with No Time to Die. That sounds good. Because I'm waiting for... Uh, oh, Majesty Secret Service. That's one of my favorite, like, Quantum favorites. But okay. since we have a week in between Groundhog Day and Lindsay's birthday pick, I say we should do the weird Sean Connery double feature that week. That sounds good. And that's the first one I wrote. Down. Okay. Which would be Never Say Never Again with The Rock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's going to be fun. Okay. 
just me typing these all on my 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 phone. The only thing <laughs> I remember ever. All right. Well, yeah, we will. Uh... We'll do that. That sounds good. So, uh, anything Thanks, else you want to add? For planning all those out. Oh, man. and and then we'll then we'll close it out with the other four John Glenn films. That's all the '80s Bonds after for your eyes only, and then we will end it with the th other three Brosnans. Nice. Yeah, I'm also ready to get into the Daltons as well. It's been a while since I've seen both of those. Oh well, that'll be that'll be a big one. We'll do two Moors and two Daltons. Ooh, nice. So that'll be definitely a a, a contrast of a <laughs> performance <laughs> and type of movie. Yeah. Um. I can't believe it's already February. What? I know it. Time does not exist. It doesn't. Well, but, uh, it does because it keeps changing. And it's not like we're in a time loop, even though it feels like we've been in an infinite time loop for the last two years. Oh, our our, yeah. But our time loop episode is for the fact is on the date when I didn't realize February was that close. Yeah, that's what winter feels like, though. Right. All right, guys. Well, Cody. As always, thank you for uh, joining us. And if anybody listened, we... Uh, Do you mean thank you for indulging us? Yeah, indulging. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you really, uh, we learned a lot. And we've watched a lot of James Bond here lately. So We have, we have covered 10 films in the franchise, even though we still have 15 to go. <laughs> hey, we called through that though. Yeah, we did. We call uh, it halfway from here. <laughs> Ten to <laughs> fifteen to go. But uh, we got we got one error out. We got the Connery error gone. Right. That's right. Right. Got well, Roger uh, Moore halfway done. Yeah. Plowing through them. We're but, laying. Uh, we're laying the the foundation. Right? For anybody who wants to learn about James Bond or watch James Bond, you, we've covered the first era. We're creeping into the others. Yeah. It's working. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe this has been <laughs> delightful to participate Maybe. In. Maybe somebody will learn something. They're probably just going to be like, what They'll the hell are they like, rambling These about? People need to go and talk to a doctor yeah, about like, ADHD. Do they have anything better than Luke? <laughs> Uh, before we end the show, I want to give a shout out to some some people who've been on the show and have their own things. Um, first off, I want to give a shout out to Robbie Fleming, who's been on the show. He has a YouTube channel. You should check him out. He posts things daily, so he's busy. Uh, Justin Doyle, who's also on Flim Robbie's show. On their YouTube, The Fleming Show. Um, he also has a worthy view where he reviews movies for like a minute on TikTok and YouTube. And then I also want to give a shout out to Lisa Solano, who runs the I Love That Movie page and I Love That Movie podcast, <clears throat> where her guest picks a movie they love and they just talk about it. So you should check out all those people's content that they're putting out there. For sure. I've, all I've met all awesome people and yeah really worth the follow yeah awesome peeps so and entertaining for sure just delightful so. anywho all right guys i guess i'm gonna go ahead and uh we'll sign off say good night uh, we're shutting down the lights we're closing up <laughs> You do not have to go home, but you can't stay here. You gotta go watch some other people ramble about something on the internet. <laughs> That's right. Exactly. You gotta, you gotta start scrolling again, finally. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, guys. We will see you next week. Oh, oh man, real quick. Anything coming up this weekend? Yes. Um, Friday. Robbie, I guess, is just our guest for the month of January. He's going to come in and talk okay. to fr the it's French. It's January. 
Yeah, he's going to talk the French Dispatch with us. If you guys are available, we're doing that Friday afternoon at 1 p.m. our time. I will double check, but just in case, we we haven't seen it yet, but I've got it on cue. We'll watch it uh, uh, tomorrow night to prepare, and hopefully we can uh, be there. If not, I understand. No worries. As you know, it's just that six-hour time difference. So Yeah, I know. I totally... Uh, totally get it. So totally understand. But okay, well, cool. And that's it. Just uh, just Friday. Just Friday, and then we start. We start pretty much what's gonna take us through most of the year. We will start our Ridley Scott slash Cohen Brothers series in February. Cool. But we are not doing multiple shows a weekend. So what I'm doing this time is one month we'll focus on one filmmaker and this flip flop back and forth each month. That sounds good. That's a good. That's a good balance. We will get to you know. I don't want to say burn out because they they all do multiple films, but Just you know shakes things up. Shakes it up, yeah. Well, the Ridley Scott series is going to be worse than the Coen Brothers movie because they have pretty, they have a pretty consistent filmography, whereas Ridley mm-hmm. Scott's is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm only gonna, especially when we get to certain movies, I'm gonna have to pick a cut and go with it and just <laughs> yeah. read up on the others because there's no way. Yeah, no, don't no watch way. the multiple cuts. Um. No, I, I can't. My brain. But that's why there's so many different people involved when we talk about these. Yeah, it's like everybody can just watch their favorite. What if? What come if? Come together and talk about. What if when it when it, we do get to certain movies that have different cuts? What if we each chose a different cut of the film? That would be interesting, especially with our Blade Runner episode. If someone watches the theatrical, someone watches the final cut, someone watches the director's cut. We should. We we everyone should get a different cut to and make and take notes. I know we've discussed it before, but I think it would be, uh, I think it would be interesting. Everyone should volunteer we for it. We have to. We have to. Oh, are we volunteering? Well, I don't know. Uh, we'll just I was discuss say, it. Draw but... straws because yeah. we already know which one you're going to pick. So uh, <laughs> I know yeah. nobody wants the theatrical cut. So yeah, nobody wants that one. That's why it would only be fair to draw straws or flip a coin or something. Well, yeah, we'll figure it out. I don't think I'll make our guest watch the theatrical cut. <laughs> no, if it came down to it, I would. If it came down to that it, I'd take like the theatrical planners. cut. I mean, I'll watch it. But I know, like Kingdom of Heaven. Uh, well, I, 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 I would say just watch the director's cut because it's like yeah. a whole different movie. Uh, yeah, I was gonna say I highly recommend the director's cut on that. So we don't have a guest for that, so we can just watch it because, like. What's going to happen is we'll probably talk like 15, 20 minutes about that Columbus movie, and then we'll be like, it's so Kingdom of Heaven. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kingdom of Heaven is so great, and I, I love it. It's not just a completely uh, historically accurate movie like all Hollywood films, but I love the content. I love the fact that it showed that the Knights Templar were not you know, this holy order and the fact that it got into uh, um, that it was all political. It went from being a holy endeavor to pol- politics and money and land and the, the, the people who went over there just used the excuse of it, a crusade to go over there and get richer. Mm-hmm. Oh, and gosh, people don't do that and they touch right? on that and that's why i love it because you re, you know you mentioned the the knights templar and people a lot of people are like oh yeah they're so great and you know they were doing god's work and yada 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 no i also like that they don't villainize the muslim characters either in the movie exactly yes that is another good uh uh point made in that movie and you got the Leper King. Oh, it's so good. We'll get into it. So I'll stop. Her. It's been a yeah, couple a years very... since I've seen it, so I've been I'm excited to, Same. to watch it. Very again. very underrated film of his that I don't think 
gets as much praise as it should. Especially that director's cut. That director's cut is really well met, done. Ooh, yeah. And there's some soundtrack points in there that I that I can point out to you. They, It's the same composer, and I don't want to give out the wrong name, so we'll get into it, but I know he... He he did he composed for the Thirteenth Warrior, and you know there's a po- there's a point in the film where uh, Orlando Bloom's character is giving this you know this big speech this big inspirational speech they have to defend the wall, and you can hear the Thirteenth Warrior cue uh, a theme cue up behind that and i was like i remember sitting there like oh oh 13th warrior and people were like what what i'm like no you you can hear it it's 13th warrior and we were like you're crazy man (laughs) i I haven't seen that since it came out but i liked it when i saw it 13th warrior yeah yeah it's it's good Uh, another michael crichton yeah that's actually a michael crichton i haven't read yeah, I haven't either. So, but it the movie's good, and yeah, that's a good Michael. Uh, that's a decent Michael Crichton adaptation. Hey, write this down, babe. And this is another idea: the movies of Michael Crichton. Oh, well, let's see. There's a few good ones, and then there's a lot of bad ones. Yeah, but it might now are we counting? Movie, are we? Would you count just the stuff? that he wrote as a book or are you going to count like stuff he directed too because you know he did Westworld as a movie yeah but that's, not, that's not based on a book of his I don't know we'd have to we'd have to look into that curated one curated collection and do we have to watch like, Sphere can we you know I haven't skip, seen that can we skip that one was it that bad it sounds like we can it's not very good. This isn't supposed really? to be painful, mm. Cody. We're not supposed to watch <laughs> things that hurt us. And we, and that's just an idea. We don't have to do that. We don't. We don't have to do. Because yeah. I was thinking, um, what was the other movie about the gorillas that he did? Congo. Uh, Congo. Uh, I, I remember that being movie. decent, but I know it's, it's considered bad. It's a decent bad. You know, it's a. <laughs> And then if you want to talk about a racist movie dealing with Japan, there's Rising Sun. Mm. Mm-hmm. And I then... I, I've got that on VHS, and I remember seeing it when I was younger. Like I mean, like my parents renting it. Yeah. Getting that Wesley Snipes and... Sean Connery. Sean Connery yeah. Because I've got that. I just recently got that in a collection on uh, VHS. I was like, hey, I remember that. But I don't and... remember the details. Workplace sexual harassment, but this time the woman is sexually harassing the man. Disclosure. How oh no, he did Michael Crichton. Yeah, it's based off a of Michael Crichton book. Also, the Andromeda Strain. That's older though. Oh yeah, I'm trying to think. I didn't see. Uh, what is that called? Time something. Oh, or they, uh, or they go back to medieval. I read the book, but the I heard the movie was awful. Where they go back to medieval it, times. Yeah, it wasn't the greatest. Um, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I think that's Gerard, like B- Gerard Butler and Paul Walker. Paul Walker, yeah. I yeah, can't remember what rough. it's called. Is Time Something? I think that's like the last book of his that. Um, like got adapted to the screen. Ooh, I can see one. <laughs> womp womp. <laughs> you know he also helped create ER. Oh wow. Yeah. That's crazy. I never That's I never impressive. got into ER. I'm I'm I don't know there if I There are plenty of hospital dramas to get involved in. Look, when it comes down you to TV just shows, you got to grab onto one and pick that and follow that. Growing up, I'm, I I I never latched on to any like court dramas or cop dramas or hospital dramas. You know, I was like, I'll just go watch a, a See, recorded TNG watch for the fifth or sixth because, time. Because they both worked for TDC and one was a nurse. So we had to watch all of those shows. And I have uh, uh, 
cop relative and another nurse relative. It's all. I, I, I got into Scrubs, though. I, I thought Scrubs was pretty fun. <laughs> Speaking uh, of courtroom dramas, did you guys know they're bringing the original Law and Order back? Oh, why? I don't know because it's still I guess, on TV. You guys don't miss it. It's still there. It's I guess because playing. Dick Wolf's like my my uh, spinoff series can't last longer than the original series. Because <laughs> yeah, what is it okay. called? I always, I always get the letters wrong. I know. It's, I think it's SVU. I always say SUV, which is wrong. That's SUV, special yeah. victims unit. Yep. Yeah that that has and, been on over twenty years now, so it's outran the original oh, Law and Order. Whoa. Good on it. It was the superior Law and Order. That's why it's lasted so long. <laughs> and Criminal Intent can't still be on TV because what's his name? It's canceled. It's NYPD Blue and I see. I just I don't know, man. I oh, my dad loved it. NYPD Blue. Everybody's dad loved NYPD. Yeah. Blue. <laughs> Everybody. I just yeah, especially I just, if your dad was a cop. Oh, my dad wasn't a cop. He just likes cop shows. Yep. Now this he likes good. now he likes Yellowstone and Longmire. <gasps> Oh, my dad's gone down the Yellowstone rabbit hole. The Yellowstone Road. <laughs> He's a. I'm like dad. I tried to tell him. He tried to explain it to me. He was like, "Oh man, Bubba, it's got Kevin Costner, and you like and westerns. No, we it's like a Kevin modern Cosner day western, and things. and he, you know, he he uh, it's about him and his family. And I'm like, Daddy, I, I watched the. We got about halfway through the first season where I really tried for you. Like I was gonna try to watch it. I wanted to like it because I, you know, I like Kevin Costner and I, I I love westerns, you know. And I was like, well, maybe it is kind of like a modern day western. Got halfway through it and we just we couldn't finish it. I was like, there's no way I'm not gonna be. I can't. This is like crap. And I'm like, I know people like this, but. But it's people it's don't like just like it. They love it. I'll put it to you this way: it's like the people who like Fight Club for the wrong reasons. Uh, if you if you're liking, because I've seen people with Dutton family, the Dutton vest and shirts and Dutton Ranch bumper stickers and stuff. I'm like, and I'm like, dude, it's like you're rooting for the Sopranos. Those are not good people. Like they're all you? they're all dirt bags and they're all pieces of shit people who. Who make bad choices? Who and make hurt bad each other. choices and hurt each other, and they hurt their their own family, and you're you're you you're like calling these people heroes, and I'm like I don't get it. I just... uh, changing subject. Have you guys watched Encanto yet? No, no, we haven't seen that. I okay. I haven't sat through and watched it yet. But okay, well, you should watch it when you get a chance. It's on Disney Plus. Um, it's a really good movie with good music. Because I was going to make a joke, but you haven't seen it yet, so you won't know the Is joke. We don't talk about Bruno? Yeah, I was going to say. I don't, get, I, don't, I don't understand it, but I've seen it. Like Yeah, everywhere. it's, it's everywhere like, now, but you know, there are two things we don't talk about now, and that's Fight Club and Fight Bruno. Club and Bruno. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's my, that's, I'm sorry, by the way. Like, I mean, I, I maybe he likes it. You know, if he does, good for him. Everybody needs something to enjoy. And again, I really, I sat there and crapped on something after I said I wasn't going to crap on somebody else's stuff that they like. But, but damn, Yellowstone's just not. It's not for you. It's okay. Not it's for okay. me. Yeah. It's not okay. But apparently, it's a huge demographic for seventy-year-olds because not only does oh. my dad. My dad love it. Like somebody he used to go to school with, she was texting him like when we went and visited for at Christmas time. Like, have you watched Yellowstone yet? I'm like, oh my god, they're like in a text trend about this. Oh Aww. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. About and that show rough too, dude. That, show's that show is rough. Is the, the same reason that I won't watch other very popular series. It's just too mean and too heavy, and it doesn't... There's nothing nice happening. And if I wanted to see, like, a weird, awful sibling rivalry like that, I'll just watch The Righteous, righteous Gemstones. At least <laughs> then I get to laugh a little bit about how awful it is. 
I guess I need to start. Well, I need to watch all those shows because I haven't watched any of them. Oh, dude, you have got. If there's one show that you need to sit down and watch, and that's The Righteous Gemstones. I haven't seen that or The Vice Principal show or. Oh, The Vice Principals is good too, especially if you've seen uh, The Fat Man. And if, you, if you're going to watch Righteous Gemstones or you've watched Eastbound and Down, you've got to Yeah, I've only Star seen a few World. episodes of Eastbound and Down. We got up to the third season, second season, or third season. Third season sounds generous. I know we didn't get that far into it, but if you like Danny McBride, it's pretty great. Danny McBride stuff going on in Righteous he, Gemstones. He apparently grew and up. Principles. I'm going to send you something that he, like HBO did a little, this little uh, featurette for Righteous Gemstones. And it, it, he was talking about how he grew up in West Virginia in the church and his mom like did puppet show him. him his it, family started a puppet ministry. Yeah. So they're they like the bakers. No, not the bakers. It was kind just kind of. It's a weird like bakers. There's a I just watched the eyes of Tammy Faye a couple of weeks ago. I didn't realize they did puppet shows. Oh yeah. Yeah, but there is that nod to the puppet ministry and like starting out with like youth outreach and stuff in the church in Righteous Gemstones. Yeah, he pulls a lot of that. He apparently grew up a lot of around a lot of the the big mega churches that were coming up at the time. And so he kind of, I guess he kind of came from that, that religious background, but it is like, if, if you're religious, don't go in, don't go, don't watch it. Like, and even if you are, and you can keep an open mind, then please watch it. Cause it's hilarious. And it does, it does shine. They it's comedic, but they also shine a lot of light on the, the culture. The culture, yeah, the, the mega church culture. It's and very, it's very specifically American the ministry for money, culture, but the, it is the ministry for money aspect of it, mm -hmm. and it's great. Well, well, now that they've released the stuff out that came out about Joel Olstein, now I want a Wolf of Wall Street style movie about Joel Olstein. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. If you want that, then you have to watch The Righteous Gemstones as a primer because. Mm -hmm. That sounds like an inevitable biopic we're all going to get. They are. That is, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. That Righteous Gemstones is basically the Wolf of Wall Street version of of evangel like not televangelists. These mega, yeah, televangelists. And it's it's that's different. That's very different. It's good stuff. Well, just Girl. just the fact that there's cash in the walls, I'm like, that seems like something they did in the Wolf of Wall Street. Yeah, yeah. that sounds like some organized crime stuff going on. Joel. Yeah. Ugh. Well, we definitely got off topic, but that's okay. It happens. <laughs> yeah. It's All right, guys. Do. We're going to go ahead and uh, call it a night, and we will see you guys Friday. And if you're coming back for the Wednesday show, we'll see you next Wednesday. Yeah, we're going to be stuck in a time loop talking about some really good movies. Woo. Yes. And if you come back for the other show, uh, come back Wednesday. Uh, for the Wednesday show, and we'll see you then. Yep. Yeah. Uh, have a uh, good night. Thank you guys for watching. This will be on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. And um, yeah, stay safe and don't listen to Joe Rogan or Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> uh, yes, and do listen to some. Uh, uh... Do listen to some what's his name because they they pulled his music. Yeah, go listen to some Neil Young. Well, yeah. Neil Young pulled it. Neil Young pulled it from Spotify. Yeah, they didn't well, he gave it. him the option. He was like, "You need to, you need to do something about Joe Rogan or pull my music." He's setting I mean, the precedent. Yeah. They I'm went sure with Joe other Rogan. Artists so. will join in, and if they don't, you know, I get the whole free speech thing, but my gosh, when you're when you're spreading bullshit. Anyway, all right. Anyways, I just I just yeah. wanted to say that. But we don't want to get on our uh, soapboxes because it's almost one o'clock in the morning. But yes, That's get off soap my soapbox. <laughs> That's how we feel. But please stay safe. Have a good night. Actually, listen to actual doctors. <laughs> yes, Doctor Oz. Oh God. <laughs>